yeah, the question you should ask yourself, are you ready to manage the digital enterprise? We've seen this morning a number of presentations that IT is going to change, and we need to take appropriate actions. What I want to do in this presentation is to take, show you eight steps that you need to take to get you ready and use it it as a guidance for this journey. Now, let me start with a warning. And I think that warning is already clear for today that IT management is serious business. You take IT management, or you need to take IT management very seriously. To manage this new di digital ecosystem, we need to become more lean, agile, automate activities across the entire end-to-end -end value chain. And that needs to take, you need to take appropriate measures, right? And a lot of CIOs and IT executives leave these decisions to IT people. And, and normally that works out fine, but now we need to look at it from an end-to-end -end perspective, meaning we really need to change the way we implement and operate IT management itself. So let's start with step one. Step one is basically define your IT management vision. A lot of IT organizations don't have a vision of how do we want the IT function to operate. Of course, they have the ingredients like agile, DevOps. We want self-service, more automation, customer experience, let the business be in, become in control. But we need to create it as a vision and draw that and co-create that with all people's, people involved in the IT value chain and the business as well. So that's one of the key challenges. And part of that vision that you need to create, you need to ask yourself, why do we need to transform? Because if people don't agree with that, the journey after that will be very difficult. So there needs to be a sort of case for change, and people need to adopt that. Now, th there is a reason for change. I guess we already discussed it th this morning. There is a perfect storming, storm coming right at us, right? And this is the only route we can take, so the storm will come anyway, and we need to be prepared. So what do we need to do to be prepared, and what, what is changing the environment? Now, this morning I already showed you this slide with the four forces that are changing the way and, and shaping the way we need to make this new operating model work. At one side, IT, seen as a strategic asset for the business to automate, becoming part of the business itself. At the same time, we need to do more. We need to not just deliver faster, but also reduce the cost or at least improve efficiency, become transparent, traceable. We've got many more um, requirements we need to adhere to, like uh, security, compliance, and regulatory, like GDPR next year. Uh, it's not going to be easier. So we have more and more requirements, and there's nothing uh, re uh, left behind because there's only things coming to it additionally. And at the same time, new technologies. We saw that this morning as well. Cloud, big data. We need to be able to manage that. And again, what are the ingredients for this new operating model, DevOps, continuous delivery, and so on. Now, a lot of people believe that IT is managed today very well. Well, in reality, uh, that's not really the case, right? Uh, this is we created a mess, you could say, almost, in, in our IT management space. And partially that is because we never did a, have a plan for it. It just continuously evolved. And with the introduction of fertilization, we added new tools. And now with cloud, we added new tools and processes. So eventually, we run up that we have different stakeholders in the IT function and in the business. And they don't know where to go to get that single version of the truth. What service do I have? What does it cost? What is my next release coming? Uh, what are the priorities for the business? What are my risks? And so on. So we got enough tools. We got enough processes. That's not our issue. We need to probably simplify, reduce the number of processes, reduce the number of tools, and make it work across the entire value chain. We got a lot of data out there in, I, in our IT organization, growing number of logs, but it uh, doesn't give us an insight at this moment. We use spreadsheets still to get an understanding how IT is functioning. So we don't have the transparency, traceability, and again, we have still a lot of manual activities. So a lot of CIOs and executives say, yeah, I realize that, and I'm already preparing myself. I'm going to do Agile, DevOps. And after a few years of experimenting with cloud, Agile, continuous delivery, they realize, oh, we should have done it differently. We should have created a bigger picture first before we started to experiment, and suddenly we're, we have cloud environments running, and we don't even know which business is using it. And again, the same happened with virtualization a few years ago. We didn't manage it, and, and suddenly we had 20,000 virtual machines running out there, and nobody had a clue what, what it was used for. In the past, uh, we got away with it, right? IT is working fine. 
but that's not anymore. Now we need to deliver faster, better, more secure, lower the risks. So in the past, maybe this old way of working that we have shown today works, but not in a new environment. We need to manage many more components that we did in the past, cloud services, microservices, and so on. We have many more vendors that we need to manage, whether there are cloud vendors, different sourcing vendors we need to work with, many more interactions in our ecosystem. As well, we got more changes to manage. Due to continuous delivery, uh, we got more changes, more releases to manage, and as a result of that, more data, more log files, more incidents, more change, more requests, and so on. More events, like security vulnerability, security events we need to act upon. And at the same time, the consumption of IT is only going to rise up, so we got more requests. We need to turn things on and then turn off again if we don't need it. So that means that we meet more and more need to do more activities faster, and at the same time, we got more compliance in regulations, like I mentioned GDPR, for example, or other security measures. So it only adds up, we have to do more, better. That means our current way of working is not sustainable anymore. We need to change the way we manage IT. So the question is, what needs to be transformed? Now, actually, first of all, we need to focus on the end-to-end -end value chain, as we discussed this morning as well. What are the value streams, and how do I deliver value to my business? It's also people transformation. We need to create new teams that work together. It's not just teams by itself, but how do they collaborate together to get a business service and manage the business? It's a process transformation. Simplify the pro processes, streamlining them, maybe even eliminate them. I don't want to manage 20, 30 different processes. I want to manage end-to-end -end value chains. So we need to rethink the way we manage our processes, how they are supported by automated tools, what data do we need, and so on. We also need to basically transform the way we support IT. As we mentioned, there's a lot of tools out there, but now we need to think about how do we manage the end-to-end -end workflow, and how do we support that with the right automation tools and simplify the landscape. And, and lastly, it's also about the data transformation. We need to define what data in your IT organization do you really need to manage IT. And not as we have today, there's not even a common data model. We just have different data sources, different data models. Tools from different vendors have their own repositories, only terminology and concepts. How do we bring that together to get insight? There are a lot of changes that we need to do there to realize that. So just a picture of what is it what we'd like to achieve. What we like to achieve is a streamlined, automated, transparent workflow that comes from a demand from the business, getting it into production, and have the feedback loops. So it's about making IT flow transparent, more automated, eliminate handoffs, provide the feedback loops, and it's basically working with the business, development, and operations together, those three parties sitting together. And it looks like a linear model, but it's actually a, a continuous feedback loops and, and uh, cycles there. It's a kind of a, a yeah, streamlined factory, but then from an end-to-end -end perspective. So focus on the value that you want to lift to the business, faster delivery, reduce costs, improve performance, and, um, and reduce your risks. Now, do we, by the way, agree that this kind of things that you're working on as well, is that what you want to achieve? More streamlined and automated end-to-end -end workflows? Yeah? Because that, then it starts with, well, how does my new operating model look like to achieve this? And most IT organizations, they don't have defined a real operating model. They don't have a bigger picture in, in their minds. This is how we run IT, this is how we manage IT, and this is how we collaborate with the business and the ecosystem behind that, or even how we are part of the business. So most organizations don't have this operating model. So that's what we need to draft together with the business, with the IT, to create this overall picture. Now, what are the ingredients for the IT operating model? First of all, as I mentioned, it's reinventing the way we work in IT, or work with the business and IT. It's about the agility, but also DevOps. Think about value streams, shift left. We need to prepare during development anything that will happen in production, like instrumenting applications, creating transparency. So we really need to think about, again, how we manage the work in IT. And the other one is, how do we modernize our IT management platform? It's not just the tools, but also the supporting, let's say, data, integrations, 
and, and the vendors part of that. It's, it, we need a modern IT management platform to be able to deliver faster, more secure, and lower costs. So it's about automation of end-to-end -end workflows, about integration, service brokering, and data-driven. And, and lastly, yeah, we need to rethink the way we support it with the right people. There could be new skills and competence needed uh, in this model, like automation skills, but also how do we work with different teams together. So why would you start with an empty sheet in defining this no new operating model? Because we know all the ingredients, like Agile, DevOps, continuous delivery, shift left, feedback loops, value streams, and probably it's a good start to use the IT for IT reference architecture as your initial start, as the blueprint, and that, use that as a sort of quick start to build this new operating model. This picture you sh uh, you've seen before, but IT for IT can be taken as this foundation for your operating model, defining the value streams, defining the functional components or capabilities you need, the data, the data flow, and the feedback loop. So it's a very good uh, tool to get started with your overall operating model. And that's not a simple task because an operating model is not just IT for IT. There could be other practices out there. And one of the challenges we're facing today is that we've got so many best practices, concepts in the market, being it ITO, COVID, but there's emerging new topics as well. Uh, BRM box, for example, or uh, uh, USM box, SIAM. So there's so many practices. There's a question? Yeah, there's a lot of noise upstairs, yeah. Um, so what is the challenge that we are facing is that there are practices out there, but we need to carefully select these practices. You're not going to implement these all, because a lot of these practices don't have the value if you cannot really combine them. So the first thing that we typically see in large organizations is they can start with the IT for IT reference architecture, defining the building blocks that you need. Basically, that already covers the foundation, because IT for IT covers those capabilities like DevOps, uh, agile development, and continuous delivery. So that you use as your foundation for your operating model. Then you're gonna ask yourself, okay, if I have IT for IT as my operating model, as the framework, potentially there are other practices you still need to combine. For example, enterprise architecture, Pro maybe you still have traditional project management, agile delivery, service management, and governance, security, and uh, competence framework, for example, to manage what kind of skills and competence do I need in my IT function. So then typically, you, you use something like TOGA, for example, or PMBOK, Scrum, or other agile methodologies, ITIL in that area, and COVID, and for example, ISO 27000 for security, and SVR or ECF for your competence framework. So what you have to do is cleverly blend this together, but using IT for IT as your bigger picture, the framework, the umbrella, and then glue a number of these practices. Because you use Scrum, you will use TOGA, and you will use, um, for example, for skills and competence management, SVR, for example. So that's a thing we need to do. So once you've figured out a high-level operating model using IT for IT as a framework, we also need to work on some sort of standard terminology within the IT function. You will be amazed in larger IT organizations that the terminology and concept used in the different line of businesses, IT, development, operations, are very different. People talk about user stories, epics, features, or changes, requirements, incidents. They have different backlogs, projects, um, uh, emergency requests, all those things. We don't have a good common terminology. It means communicating with each other is complicated, but also how do we integrate the different tools with different terminology and not talking with the vendors. And it's not that complicated as it sounds because IT for IT provides a common uh, data model, but also kind of common terminology so that we can share the same terminology. And it, data is becoming a key component in your IT organization, maybe more important than, than the processes, because data typically is how we manage the IT function. It's about the work we manage, like uh, it could be user stories, uh, sprint, the plans, incident, the changes, configuration items, and contracts and licenses. But how do they all fit together? And that's where IT for IT can help you with building this bigger model. And that's what this diagram shows as well. In 
IT4IT, there is a common data model as the backbone, defining also the integration points yeah, from, from, for example, in operations, detect to correct back into the backlog for correction. Uh, because one of the challenges we face today is that we don't have good data insight. Most organizations even don't have a good overview. What are the services we have? What are the applications we have? Who's using them? What does it cost? Uh, how, how is the customer experience? Um, and what are the risks, for example, associated with it? We don't have the single, uh, fully service lifecycle approach and understand all this around the service. So if you, uh, it's nice to have an Alexa or Google Home, but typically get an answer, sorry, we cannot help you with that because you don't have this correct operating model in place. Now the next step, once you have a high level picture, some common terminology, it's probably good to start with, have, do you have even a good understanding how you operate IT today? If you ask a lot of people how you organize today, they, you get many different answers. Most IT organizations don't have a clear picture how they're operating today. How work from the business, like a demand or a request or a change, flows through the IT organization, through the different teams, through the different tools. That's one of the challenges. There is no good understanding of IT today. So we need to start working on sort of customer journeys. How does IT today work if it's coming from a demand from a business or a requirement or a story comes in or, for example, a request or an incident? These are complex end-to-end -end workflows uh, because every team, maybe per technology line of business, is slightly different. So we really, really need to get an understanding of how do we get a demand in and how does it today uh, work, walk through the IT organization to value realization or an enhancement and change, a an epic, a story. How does it get into the release? And the same for a service request. How does it get actually fulfilled? And we have a lot of things like an event. Could be a security vulnerability or a data breach or a security breach. How does that fix? Today, people have not a single picture of how this actually will work. And, if, and we need to build that because then we can build the case of saying we need to change. This is not how we're going to continue operating. And that's what we talked about is a kind of value stream analysis. We need to look at the different value streams and how does the work flow, what are the lead time, what are the bottlenecks, just to understand a bit how we are currently operating that. And then we need to plot the tools on it, the data, and some of the controls and the response and responsibilities. And we don't, um, it's, it's not that you can um, do it yourself, but you need to do it with teams. Maybe it's uh, asking the different teams how they're operating. Because you will realize that different technology teams will slightly operate differently. So you need to get the collaboration with the different IT people and teams to understand how you're organized today. Because then you get a good understanding of how many work queues do you have in your IT organization. And having work queues is a key concept in it for it and in value streams. We need to manage work or automate work but today, we've got a lot of different queues out there managing work. And because there's so many with different tools, different technologies, different teams, it's not always clear what is happening in the IT organization, who is working on what. And the business is asking, it, it looks like you're always busy, but what are you actually doing for me? So we have like queues that demands come in or ideas. We've got epics features. There are test cases to be done. We have defects and bugs out there, change requests, incident queues. Uh, risk assessments that people do, audit findings, um, service requests, we have events coming in, and not to forget a lot of other social media and collaboration systems like email, probably a lot of work items are still managed through email and spreadsheets. And this is a challenge because we've got so many work items that we work on with different teams, this is not being transparent if they're all separated work queues. And it t tries to uh, synchronize all the workflows together. Because you can imagine today, how are these queues supported by your systems? Maybe you've got a project management system out there, a development system where the features and epics are managed, the test management system where your test cases are managed. You still have your traditional service management system. Your governance risk compliance system, request management, event, uh, sorry, and uh, others. Typically, service management is seen as a sort of central system. But in a new digital environment, potentially service management system is just one of the many. Or hopefully it's one of an overall platform where we met because backlog management is probably sitting in different places. Once you get that picture organized, uh, you, you get an understanding how you're managing IT today. It's actually a big mess. There was a CIO that I talked to and he said, 
said to me, are you really saying that I make a mess of my IT organization? I said, yeah, well, actually, you did. It, it is today typically a mess with tools, integration. I can imagine that you do need to, to change your processes. You upgrade your tools with all the effort that you need to take. So you need to think about it. Can I really, the way when I run IT today, can I re really re manage this new digital enterprise with this mess of solutions? Another thing you need to do is in five, you need to understand and you need to do that quickly, what are all the initiatives my IT organization is currently doing to prepare itself? Because you will be surprised that the IT organization is already doing those things, right? What we talked about in IT for IT. They have a lot of projects out there. We need to understand what everybody is doing. For example, if you have the IT for IT reference architecture, I simplified it a bit. And you will be amazed how many projects there are in your IT organization trying to fix, tweak, and tune the IT value chain. You've got people working on condition delivery. Um, we have demand portfolio management, security testing, automated release management, infrastructure provisioning. There's a project for self-service, uh, security management risks, GDPR, for example, cyber defense, of course. People complaining that the CMDB is not up to date, so let's do a discovery solution for this. Uh, we got identity and access management issues there. Application performance monitoring, also nice to understand the performance of, an of a service. Uh, intelligence and reportings, of course, IT data lake, security, and I can continue with that for a while. Uh, artificial intelligence, chat ops, and yeah, lastly, the CMDB again. All these projects, all these initiatives, you are doing right now at this moment. The problem is there's no vision of how that all works together. We can implement new tools, we can change practices like continuous delivery, but it doesn't improve our end-to-end -end workflow if we don't have this bigger picture. So that's why it's so important. Get a good understanding. Everything you're doing in IT now to improve, plot it to the IT for IT reference architecture and then decide, are we doing the right steps? We cannot do this all at once. We cannot do this if you don't have this structure in place because you probably will fail all these projects if they only do it in siloed, in their own ways of working. Well, let me brief uh, pause for a minute. Uh, but that's what key challenge we're facing, right? We made a lot of mess of IT management. We don't have good structure in place. And again, we're making the same mistake. We move to the cloud. And again, we said, oh, we're gonna do it differently. We'll, we'll explore how it will work. Companies that move to the cloud after three, four years, they figured out it's a mess again. We didn't manage the cloud. We don't know what's running. We don't know what's cost. We should have taken appropriate measures. Now it's your time to do this. Take appropriate measures. So what do you need to do? Step six, you need to think about your core platform that is essential for managing IT. And it's not everything what you need in IT management or IT for IT, but what is really core to get your IT organization ready. It's basically defining the building blocks. Now, IT for IT has a lot of building blocks, and it looks very overwhelming and complex initially. So what you need to decide is where do I start? Because there's all these building blocks you already have today in your IT function. You're not a greenfield. But now we need to think about what is the core that we need to do well and build that and then continuously evolve that. So prioritization is very important. So what is the core? It's the backbone. The service backbone or a platform where you have an understanding of what are the services you have, when releases are coming, what is deployed where, and then you connect your core components. You've got service management, you've got your request management component, application backlog management, and potentially portfolio and project management. And then you have a number of those components like application port service portfolio, the catalog, and seem to be. These are your core engines that you have to create transparency and traceability and manage your core work items. So that's an important one. It's not sufficient to manage the entire T function, but at least gives you the transparency, what is going on, who is doing what, what do I deliver? And of course, then I need to combine that into the automation layer. So I got that core backbone, and then I need to add the automation, automated build, automated test, automated deploy and of course, organize my processes uh, around, across these value streams. Um, I'll skip a slide. And then num number seven, there's a major change we need to do, and it's changing the way we are basically let people decide on these things. We need to move from an ego system to an ecosystem where people work together. Because today, 
It could be a developer, it could be a service security specialist, or a portfolio manager, or an enterprise architect. They always know better how to do their process, what tools do they need, and they like tools. IT, it's IT people, right? They like a lot of tools. And the problem is, initially we select tool A, and after a few years, people say, well, now we've got Ansible, it's much nicer than Puppet, let's do that. And they're continuously changing the way they want to run IT, and they don't have that integral picture. So every team does their own thing. And I can assure you, um, IT management, there are enough vendors, enough tools to choose from. If you let everybody select their own tools, it's gonna fail. Because every tool nowadays comes with a way of working, comes with their own data model. A tool is not a tool just anymore, it's a way of working. So you select one tool, you get a way of working with it. If you have 100 tools, you cannot collaborate. You need a way to standardize the way of working and then say, okay, what are the solutions that I need that fit my way of working? Because eventually it's not about the tools, it's about how can those solutions integrate? How do we collaborate with different people in the value chain and work together? to get this seamless way of working and automate activities. That's what we want to achieve. Now, then you should ask yourself, and that's always a key question, who takes the decisions of how IT management should be organized? What practices do I use? Also, of course, what tools do we use? Everybody decides that today. There is no clear ownership today. You would argue the CIO is the owner, but it's not in reality. But that's what the thing we need to fix. Who is defining the way we work? I'm not saying that it's uh, should be top down, but we need to work together to get this defined. So somehow you need to define on the portfolio level, somebody that says, I'm responsible for IT management, for the processes, the value streams, and the capabilities. And we have people that are responsible for sub areas. For example, somebody's responsible for strategy to portfolio, understands the practices we need there, the tools we need there. And so each value stream, you need to find an ownership. You cannot define and change that. It's like product ownership in an, in an agile way. There must be product owners, service owners for each of these areas. Otherwise, we start uh, again with this mess. And then, of course, you always have practitioners below. For example, people that know all about test management and test automation, or automated deployment, or financial management, or security and risk management. So you need to understand in your own environment who are the stakeholders that influence the decisions here. And we need to formalize that. It's not additional bureaucracy. It's just the same as agile, creating structure. Who is the product owner? Are we working on it, on the right things? The last step, number eight. Once you have done that, you need to create a kind of a roadmap, a kind of a steps to take to show value. And it must be in iterations and agile. You want to show benefits to the business quickly and not have a multi-year program and without having the benefits. So, Again, the roadmap is not as simple as saying, I understand my gaps and I'm gonna fix the gaps. That is gonna to fail. And a lot of people fail with this because they're gonna look at their own process or they say, oh, the testing takes too long. Let's put test automation in. That's not the solution. We need to rethink how we develop. Maybe testing should be part of the design already. So you cannot just try to eliminate these pain points. You need to think about the end-to-end -end picture first. And then you define, and we saw the pictures today as well, sort of priorities and start working on it. I really need to stop and uh, close down, but let me uh, look at the signs, and hopefully you can recognize those signs. What are the signs in your IT organization that must realize, make you realize that you need IT for IT? And these are the signs. You don't have really transparency. You've got a lot of fragmented tools out there. You've got bureaucratic processes slowing down for example, it could be change processes or risk processes that have not been adapted for the agile way of working. You've got a lot of people drowning in manual activities. You don't get insight. We've got a lot, of manage, a lot of IT initiatives to improve. If you've got all these initiatives to improve the IT function, you need to understand, oh, something is wrong here. And also, no target operating model and no uh, ownership for these capabilities. Now, let me start uh, skip, uh, moving to the lunch. Yeah, it's about uh, food. We want to achieve a kind of a Jamie Oliver vision is the naked IT organization. Lean, transparent, not too many processes, not many tools, only the bare essentials to manage IT. Yeah, that's the kind of modern cooking for IT, I would say. So 
finalizing before lunch, this is a hamburger, just to visualize what is IT for IT. So IT for IT is basically the umbrella. It's the bread, it's the foundation. It covers Agile and DevOps, right? So that's what you need to have a good IT meal, DevOps and Agile. And then you potentially need to add other ingredients like TOGAF, Prince, Scrum, ITIL, COVID, and ISO 27000. And then you have your IT management sandwich, okay? Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, hopefully there are some questions I can still answer for before the lunch. <laughs> wow. Awesome. We asked Rob to describe IT for IT in 30 minutes or less, something that took six plus years to build, find job. He left us with 50 shades of IT management, the naked lunch, and eight steps to success. <laughs> and who would ever forget the man in the bright orange jacket? We know you Dutch love the orange, but wow. <laughs> Thank you for making IT for IT so visible. Um, Rob, we have a couple questions, but they I think um, some of them are quite general to IT for IT, so I'm wondering if what we might want to do is we have this wonderful lean coffee talk opportunity that goes from the coffee break on where your topics can get voted up to the top and be addressed in a really lean and agile manner. 